I hope to come through the experience having gained an, an experience I didn't have before that I'm going to learn and grow from. And, and even though there are days that I'd like to spend all day in my room, I, I can't do that. And the role that, that I have, that has been carved for me, that I have carved for myself, that was a niche that somehow needed to be filled and I was there at the time and it filled it to a certain extent. I can't walk away from that. I'm, I'm committed to that. Unfortunately, it seems that there is a definition of normal out here in the world and uh, I think that's the hard part. As, uh, as time marches on, as technology increases and you have the internet and people can get connected you have differences and uh, I know 20 or 30 years ago I don't remember when the American with Disabilities Act was passed I know children in education were certainly not treated well when they were different and I know the peers didn't treat them well and, and that, that's gotten a lot better uh, I, I certainly see it in middle schools uh, you know kids still have their bad habits <laughs> and I want to tease but they're pretty nice aren't they yeah, you know, kids are becoming a lot more uh, compassionate and understanding and just accepting, which is, I think, all we want. I, I, I wish I could get inside Marty's head sometimes. I wish I could understand what these autistic kids are feeling. Just because, you know, there, there are theories out there that this is the next evolutionary process. Um, I've heard theories that their body produces too many opiates and it's like a constant drug trip. Uh, it would be so interesting to find out what we as neurotypical people would experience in their situation. She was a lot quieter when I first met her. She was not as quick to open, and she was in a new setting when I met her too, which had also changed a lot of things. And she was very flappy, but that's changed also. It's time for us to spend time with our friends. And I, I love coming over here, I love talking with Austin, you know, however, however hyper he may be, I love talking with Marty. She's smarter. She's smart as a whip. She's, she's brilliant. The, I learn, I learn, and I, I get my positive social interaction at game nights like this. So I hope that they're taking away something close to what I'm taking away from it. She has become a lot more social, and she's very much opened up to our family and taken us in as her family pretty much and that's nice. You make the team uh, feel like a family, and we all are there for each other. And once that starts, it's like a snowball. And they trust, I know the people around Graham trust Graham, and the same thing with me, and feel safe and good and are inspired. And those are things that have to be when you're making a film and they all work together. I know people gave me feedback that it was the best experience that they've ever had. And I know they've worked on so many different projects. And I'm sure it's the same thing with Graham because it becomes a very special project and that they're all working together and they're all learning things that they didn't know before about each other. Autism to me is me trying to process the world and make sense of it in a way that other people may not do. In a meltdown, I'm either so angry or so sad, usually so angry. And I'm, and I'm angry because I don't understand the situation. I don't know how to respond to it. I, I withdraw into myself and then that, that pain expresses itself in, you know, I, I will hit my chest or hit my head. Um, 
And when I learned as a young child that doing that was unusual, I kept that hidden. A meltdown is frustration that you're not understanding. And you want somehow to desperately understand, and yet knowing that I may not get it. Eventually over time, it's not, I'm not as nervous, but I, you're the youngest group of people I've ever talked to, and I was very nervous last night, because I had, I had never talked to, to a, a group of school kids. You're, I usually talk to the, to the teachers, who actually, to be quite honest, don't pay near as much attention to me as you guys have today, just so you know. Yeah, high-pitched noises bother me tremendously. And inevitably, when I give a speech someplace, and there's always this one school, I cross like a, a high-pitched threshold. And feedback happens. And the first time it happened, Jackie thought, that's, oh, we're done. And I was able to pull up back pretty quickly. And I said, you know, I need like, like two minutes just to sit here. You know, she was putting pressure on my shoulder. She said, you, you know, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Yeah. Sorry? You should go get off right away. Well, But she knew that I would want to go on. I needed to do this. I had made a commitment. So she was able to pull me and, and I was able to sort of rally and um, and, and I've, I've never missed a speaking performance because of because of something that's happened.